Hello everyone. So this week has been interesting because I've just been in just a rough like mental and emotional state. I woke up with the inspiration today to make a vlog about a day of self-love. It has felt so difficult recently to do that and the fact that I woke up wanting to intentionally love myself felt like major progress and my friend Nitika Chopra is amazing. She is the founder of Chronicon and is also a chronic illness advocate. She is just always inspiring to me, but we were talking the other night. Her definition of self-love is being more committed to your happiness than to your suffering in every single moment. And she followed that by saying, you know, the first step to self-love is not, you know, jumping into trying to create new habits or trying to create a new routine. It's knowing yourself right now in this moment and what your needs are and the reason why i love her definition of self-love is because it brings me back to the moment and it helps me get in touch with loving myself in small moments this makes it so much easier for me to understand when i am committing to my happiness over my suffering. Having that language provided clarity for me so I could look back on the last week and see those moments. It also is helping me to understand where I am now. And so what I've learned in the last week is that I have been trying to hold on to old tools and habits and routines that served me really well for, you know, sometimes years but I'm not in the same place that I was before COVID-19. Life has changed tremendously for myself, for so many other people in the world. It's not fair for me to try and force old habits and tools and routines onto myself when I'm not in the same place. And so I'm bringing it back to who am I right now in this moment? And honestly, who I am in this moment is I don't know what I'm gonna do today for my day of self-love. I only know the first thing that I wanna do and that is I want to get dressed and do my makeup in a way that's inspired by Zoe Kravitz's character on High Fidelity. Cause Erica and I started watching High Fidelity on Hulu last night and I was like, this is the show I needed. It is about a moody, emotional woman who is like super cool. She owns a record shop and she's played by Zoe Kravitz who's like my favorite actor. She talks about love and relationships but through the lens of music so it's just a really unique oh erica's coming over and moody moody yeah that's been my word of the last couple weeks moody so yeah we love zoe kravitz yeah yeah we both feel like we're having crushes on her at different points of the show yeah i mean <laughs> i just i love zoe kravitz so much but her character just has such incredible style and now i'm inspired to get creative so i'm gonna start off by taking my pimple patches off and washing my face and then i will meet you at the makeup part Alrighty, I am at my desk and I have my makeup around me and I'm just gonna figure out what I'm gonna do. Uh, I'm gonna, s oh, I didn't put on eye cream. <laughs> BRB. Eye cream is on. And now I'm gonna start with some eye primer. I'm not really sure if I'm going to put eyeshadow on because the character of Rob in High Fidelity, she definitely wears eye makeup but sometimes so sometimes she'll have like black eyeliner on and it's kind of smudgy but then other times she doesn't really have that much on her eyes i'll dip into my bronzer i have like a bronzer right in front of me um so i'm just gonna put that on ever so slightly i'm working on my first eye right now off camera because i feel like i just kind of need to experiment and play around and erica brought me half a bagel with scallion cream cheese, so it's a good day over here. 
I'm liking what I did over here, so I'll show you on this eye. I have some big on my chin. Oh well, it is what it is. I'm using this uh, Urban Decay 24-7 eyeliner in Perversion. I'm not even trying to get like a perfect line here. I'm just putting a little bit on the, what is this? Why am I blinking on what this part of my eye is called? Uh, my upper lash line, there we go. And so originally I had wanted to really put on a lot of black eyeliner. As I got close to my eyes, I saw that my eyes are kind of irritated. Um, I think it's allergies. Then I'm gonna follow up with one of my favorite makeup products in general. The Laura Mercier Caviar Sticks are amazing. This one is in Tuxedo. It's a matte black color. And I'm just gonna take this eyeshadow brush and get it in there. And this is gonna help me like smudge everything around. And I'm really not trying to be perfect with this, so I'm kind of dragging it out a little bit. Okay, so I feel like that's pretty, pretty good. So for uh, mascara, I'm gonna use the Laura Mercier Caviar Volume. It'll hold the lift, but my lashes won't look like super, super curled which is kind of what I want. For face makeup, Rob doesn't really seem to wear that much makeup on her face. I'm gonna use the Glossier Skin Tint. This is like super, super light and sheer. Also, oh, I've been doing this recently where I forget to put on primer. Let's rewind, shall we? I am going to use a primer. This is the Smashbox Pore Minimizing Primer. A little bit sprayed on me. But my skin has just kind of been a little more irritated recently. Part of it is allergies. Like I kind of just get an itchy rash. You know, just stress and things, breakouts, redness. Um, my skin's just kind of been unpredictable and I've just been flowing with it. And so I feel like using a skin tint, especially if my skin is particularly sensitive, is good because it's not gonna irritate my skin even more. So I'm just going to put this on now. Blend it in with my beauty blender. You know, I think it's fun to like sit down and recreate a look of a favorite character from a movie or a TV show. I feel like I really haven't done that in a while and I used to be so into it. Like I remember when I would make tutorials about like the Vampire Diaries and Pretty Little Liars and I just felt that urge today and that inspiration and it feels good to really act on it. So this is my new favorite under eye concealer. It's the Beauty Counter Touch Up Concealer Pen and I wear the shade Light. I have been so committed to my Chantecaille under eye concealer, I never thought I would find something that I like better, but here it is. Beauty Counter has done it. It is very light. It doesn't get like creasy under my eyes. I don't think Rob really wears that much blush, but I'm gonna put on a little bit. So this is another Beauty Counter product. It is the Color Pinch Cream Blusher in Hibiscus. I've really been loving this. If you listen to my podcast, One Step, um, the episode that went up today, which is Thursday, I talked about how much I'm loving this product. So I'm just gonna pat my finger in there a little bit. I'm just gonna put this on my che cheeks for a tiny bit of color. I'm not gonna put on as much blush as I normally would. So I'm gonna use my It Cosmetics Bye Bye Pores. I have a whole system for this. I take the little tiny puff that it comes with and I put it on a bigger puff. So I'm just gonna this on. I start by putting clear gel in my brows just so I can see the shape and then I follow up with filling them in. To fill in my brows, I am going to use my Glossier Brow Flick. I'm just gonna do a little bit on camera because doing my brows is already a challenge just without a camera, but then on camera becomes even more challenging. So you get the idea and fill in my brows. For my lips, I'm not gonna put on any lip color because as far as the episodes I have seen, there haven't been like any bold lip choices. So I'm just gonna go for a clear lip balm. This is my Tatcha lip balm. I'm just gonna do this so my lips are hydrated and there's like a slight shine 
but nothing that looks like glossy. And I'm gonna go in my closet and put together an outfit that's inspired by Rob's character. She has really cool style. My style is definitely different. And so I'm gonna do my own interpretation of like what feels like the essence of Rob, but with my wardrobe. The inspiration for this outfit actually came from multiple outfits that I watched Rob wear on the show. But let's start with the t-shirt I have on. It says Modern Problems on it and I got this from a thrift store. I love it. It's actually an old TV show and this is the t-shirt for it because I googled it and I was like what is this? And it was a TV show I think from the 80s. I saw Rob wearing different cool t-shirts and so I grabbed one of my favorite t-shirts that I have and put that on. And then there's also an episode where her friends make fun of a sweater that she's wearing and they say, you do know that's not an outside sweater, right? And so when that was said, I thought of this sweater that I have, even though I definitely wear this sweater out. My mind just immediately went here because it's such a comfortable, loose, sweater and I got this from ThreadUp. I really, really love this sweater a lot, but it's kind of a similar shape to the one that she was wearing, even though it's a completely different color. And then I have on my light wash jeans because she wore light wash jeans in the show. And then there was an episode where she was wearing light wash jeans with a really cool red plaid belt. And I actually don't have any belts. So I took this, this is part of a jacket that I have. I don't know if it shows up on camera, but this is a dark green color and it kind of ties in with the green in my shirt. And then you can see the rest of my jeans. And in the same episode, with that sweater, she wears outside a pair of loafers with socks on that are visible. And I just really liked that a lot. This is my look inspired by Rob and I feel so good. Kato got a bath this weekend and so he's looking extra fluffy. We've been calling him a Cheeto puff because he is kind of <laughs> shapeless right now because he needs a haircut like everyone in this household. <laughs> a little Cheeto puff, yeah. But at least he smells so much better because he was yeah. pretty stinky last week. Little Cheeto puff. Yeah. Welcome to my podcast studio, which is my closet, specifically these shelves right here. So yesterday we were recording and this is my podcast mic. I am going to be putting this back into its box because I didn't have time yesterday to put this all away. I took the mic out and put it back into the box and then put this in the little bag that it came in. Physically putting things away helps me to honor that part of myself that needs a separation between work and my personal life. I also sent an email following up about some tickets that I bought for a Broadway show that I was really looking forward to seeing. I got an email last month saying that the show has been canceled and a representative would be in touch um, about further details. And since I haven't heard from them, I just sent a follow-up email since it has been a few weeks now because I know I feel better when I ask for what I need. And what I need in this instance is just more information because they said that they were gonna reach out and I haven't heard from them. And so I'm over here wondering like, what's happening? And that's taking responsibility for myself and what's within my control. And so that feels good, especially knowing that in the past, I wouldn't have done that. So that feels like a very personal act of self-love. Something else that I have the urge to do as I'm sitting here in front of many of my books is to, actually I just got two ideas. So one of my favorite books, I'll show you. Brave Enough by Cheryl Strayed. Say hello to this summer Pusheen. Um, I also love Pusheen, in case you're wondering. This has been one of my favorite books for years. It's a compilation of different excerpts from Cheryl Strayed's writing, and it's all 
in this book. So it's like a book of quotes. An act of self-love for me today could be just flipping to a random page and then reading whatever is on that page. I'm doing the random flip, I'm not looking, and this is where we're landing. Believe in the integrity and value of the jagged path. We don't always do the right thing on our way to rightness. For me, Today, that means allowing myself some grace to make mistakes and, you know, recognizing that life is a process and it's not about perfection. And especially in a moment like this, which just feels overwhelming at times and so somber and hard and sad and to just know there's no right way to be feeling because everybody is coming from a different circumstance, a different life situation, and we all respond to things in different ways. And so I think that we all deserve some grace right now to make some mistakes, to not do things perfectly, to allow ourselves to get to know ourselves through these moments and I'm learning so much about myself by not doing things correctly right now like trying to force old tools to work and then just being like agitated and frustrated and then realizing okay that's not working let me take a step back and let me just try something else and maybe that will work and maybe it won't. I think that was a great reminder. Another thing I am going to reach for is this jar that I have had for years that a viewer made for me and it is filled with 50 reasons why I heart Ingrid. This was inside the lid and I've opened this jar before and I haven't noticed this. Thanks for always being there for me. Oh. That is just so special. And then this is the, the note that I pulled out. So this is one of the 50 things inside. She makes people feel important. Oh my gosh, that was just such a gift. Just a pure, true gift. And it really is the little things that mean so much right now. Doing a little check of my plant friends. I'm noticing that that one up here is looking a little limp, so I'm gonna pull that one down and just give it some love and give it some water. Okay, so I'm just gonna give it a little drink. Whoop. Well, there you go, folks. You're not always gonna do everything right on the way to rightness. Cheryl Strayed was right. Taking care of my plants is an act of self-love for me because one, I've committed to caring for these plants and so following through with that care feels really nice and also it feels good to spend time with my plants and I actually think I'm going to go around to some of my other plants and um, like dust off the leaves a little bit and just touch them. I find that like touching my plants feels really good um, for me and it just helps me to slow down and be in the moment with something that is alive and living and not my dog or my girlfriend. This is my fiddle leaf fig tree. Probably can't see it really, uh, maybe a little bit on camera, but there's a little bit of dust on the leaves so I'm gonna come in with a damp cloth and just gently wipe off the leaves, but I can't do it with one hand, so I'm gonna put my camera down. Look at all the dirt and dust that came off of those. So now they're looking fresh and shiny, and it just felt good to like get in here and touch some leaves and clean them off. Look at the fur on his legs. I've been saying it looks like he has fringe on his legs because his fur there is just so long. Tato, did you know you're a cutie? So I have my cup of tea here. Tato's on his favorite pillow. When I started this, I didn't know what I would be doing throughout the day, but I am getting this feeling right now. I am nearing the end of wanting to be on camera and you know there's that part of myself that feels pressure to keep going like into the night and show you like 
any kind of movement I'm doing later, like if I decide to do a workout or a stretch or, you know, like what my skincare routine will be later, but there is that piece inside of me that is that I feel right now that is just telling me, you know, now is the time that you actually want to stop this vlog and I'm going to honor that. So that within itself, I think is a huge act of self-love. There are past versions of myself that wouldn't have honored that. And that's what today was all about, was about getting to know who I am in this moment and in all of these moments of the day. And I got to be creative and I put together a look that was inspired by a character in a TV show that I'm really loving right now. And that was so much fun because I haven't done that in so long and it just felt so fun and playful. I took care of things in my life and in my space. I have a sweet little dog snoozing behind me. I have a cup of tea here. Maybe we'll play some cards tonight. Erica's teaching me gin rummy, which I have never played before. Um, so that's us like exploring <laughs> things we can do outside of screen time. I would love to know in the comments a small act of self-love that you have done for yourself either today or recently. And it would just be really cool to see what you guys have been doing and how you have been showing yourself some love. I'm sending you all love wherever you are. Take care and we'll talk soon. Bye.